Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique and today we're checking out Animate by Mastering the Mix. This is their brand new mixing and mastering plugin and it's got a lot going on. There's a lot to cover so we're going to jump right into it. Essentially what I'm going to show you is how to use this plugin start to finish what's available inside of it and also I'm going to be using it on my master chain to bring out the hi-hats in this example track. So let's just say that I want those hi-hats to be a little more apparent in the mix and to add some upper frequency content to the overall mix. I want to point out before I jump into this, this is kind of a very specific thing I'm going to be doing this for. Trust me, we're going to learn a lot about the plugin along the way, but this is definitely useful for single channel mixing as well, or audio processing in general. So don't just think it's only for mastering where I'm using it here. It's really, really useful for all kinds of different audio processing endeavors. So down here, we've got four different effects. We've got expand, punch, ignite, and grow. And as I flip through, the colors change, and that's very, very helpful and looks super sexy. Expand is upward expansion compression. This type of processing adds dynamics to a signal. Punch is a transient shaper. Ignite is harmonic distortion processing, and grow is for stereo width. Now, each one of these has its own set of parameters down here. You can see that grow has a width slider that's negative or positive in milliseconds. It also has attack and release. Ignite, just attack and release. Punch has a sensitivity knob, attack and release, and expand because it's a compressor, has a knee and a ratio control, as well as attack and release. So to add any one of these effects to the signal, and you can add one or all four of them combined, they each have their own amount slider right here. If I come in to expand, this is the percentage of the wet signal you're adding to the dry signal. So at 100%, you're adding 100% of that wet signal to the dry signal. However, once you go above 100%, it just starts adding gain to the wet signal. So keep that in mind. Uh, you can go super crazy with this. You might wanna you know, start at the lower values or maybe go high and work your way back. It depends on your workflow. Another really, really cool thing about this plugin is it has mid-side processing as well, so we can process the mid-channel here. The left and the right, which is gonna be your stereo, or the side. You can't, they don't change. You're not gonna be able to do one and then affect the other differently. You'll see here that the amount slider always stays the same, and that just means you have to choose one of these options or the other one. So a really cool thing about Animate is the threshold control over here. This is going to engage the effect after the audio crosses the threshold we set over here. So right now it's effectively off. If I go ahead and play the audio. We're not getting any of the effect because the audio is not passing the threshold. If I pull it down. So right now, essentially the kicks are gonna be triggering expand. So if I go ahead and just pull this up to an obnoxious level. You can hear we're getting that pump in because only that kick and bass when they're together is passing the threshold. So I'm gonna pull this down. And if you want it to be on all the time, you can just go ahead and turn the threshold all the way down. And now no matter what, the effect will be initialized. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it way down. Where it's a really nice effect there. And another really cool thing about Animate, and it's got more than a few, and you'll hear me say, as you already have heard me say, another cool thing because there's just so much inside of here, is the filter frequency here. So we can really apply this upward expansion to just the kick in the bass if we wanna bring it down here. And it's got a very helpful color-coded frequency spectrum type thing going on right here where we can actually see where the frequency content is happening. So we can see that this frequency range right here, without even moving the slider and paying attention to the actual frequency readouts here, that's where the f low frequency content is. So if I wanna add the upward expansion to just that, simply do this. All right, so it's much punchier, it sounds a lot better, and if we wanted to jump into punch and then maybe add kind of the same deal to that part, that range down there, and then pull it down, just so the effect happens when the kick happens, and just pull it up. So 
So right there, it sounds a lot better, right? It sounds a lot punchier. The bass sounds bigger. It sounds fuller. And it's done exactly what I wanted to do. And if, I mean, we could just keep going with that. We can add a little bit of distortion again uh, to that little bass part. If we come down here. So that sounds a lot better. And that's how easy it is and great it is to use Animate. There's one other really cool thing, I told you I'd say it a lot, is that you see this little arrow right here? This is to show you where you should move the output slider to get sort of relative gain matching going on. So if I pull this down, the audio output as I bypass the plugin before and after will actually stay relatively the same. And that's very helpful, especially during the mastering and mixing process. So you're not getting um, tricked by things being louder. So that's very, very cool. So now let's do what I said I was gonna do in the beginning of the video, and that is bring out the hi-hats. I know I kind of went off on a tangent there and we actually ended up making the bass and the kick sound fatter, but let's do the same thing to the hi-hats. So what I'm gonna do is pull down the uh, saturation because I don't need that for this. Um, I come back to here and let's move it up to right around here. Let's check the frequency analyzer inside of here. <laughs> So right about here is where the snare happens. So if I pull this up, we're gonna be getting just the hi-hats there. And because there's only a little bit of audio in that upper frequency, we gotta pull the threshold down further. And it's a really nice thing because the readout inside of this threshold is only gonna show me the frequency range that I have. If you check it out, if I'm way up here at the top, it'll show me what's happening there. If I pull this all the way down, you'll see that it's much bigger. So that's very, very helpful. So if I, again, if I come up here and then kind of pull this down, and then do the same thing with the expansion here. If I want to bring this up, I have the threshold all the way down, so that means that the effect is always on. So boom, now we've made the hi-hats stick out a lot more in the mix. It sounds a lot better. The frequency range sounds a lot more full, a lot more complete. And we did that just using one plugin on the mastering chain. So this is a very, very effective tool. You can get some really creative results or it can be a really precision-based tool as well for mixing and mastering. So that's a quick look at Animate by Mastering in the Mix. Highly suggest checking it out. Links in the video description. I'm Joshua Casper here for Plugin Boutique. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.